scripture today is from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and, he, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The word of God for the people of God. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Heavenly Father, we come again today to say thank you. You have given us this life. But Father God, you tell us to lead this life in a Christ-like manner. You want us to be the best that we can be. You have given us so much. Father God, we sometimes take it for granted. Sometimes we think it's expected. We understand that with everything that is given, much is asked. We come to you today, Father God, to say, lift us up. As we lift up the prayers to you, no one else can help us the way you do. Not our fathers, not our mothers, our sisters, or our brothers. You are a father to the fatherless. You are a mother to the motherless. You are a brother to the brotherless. You are a sister to the sisterless. Father God, you are our all in all. We come today to say thank you for giving us so many chances to get it right. We ask that you continue to lift up our church, lift up each and every member who is struggling with pains, who is struggling with the physical ailments. Father God, we know that without going through trials and tribulation, without having a test, we wouldn't be able to have a testimony. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to kneel down, to bow our heads, and to lift up our prayers. Thank you for being our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
What a wonderful time it is being Lord and to thank him for all of his grace and thank him for his mercy. Let's do that now. Let's join our sister. Because we all were blessed today by our Heavenly Father who woke us up. Gave us an opportunity to share another day on this side of heaven. And to be able to share with one another the thoughts that we have for those who played an important role in who we are. If you are here today, that means some man played a role in you being here. <laughs> Don't have to get too scientific with that because everybody went to biology. <laughs> There's some in here young enough where I can't get too detailed on that, but I do want to say thank you. Amen. On this Father's Day, we just stopped to celebrate and honor of the men that God placed in our lives to nurture us and to serve as godly and a manly role model for the rest of us. And we just thank God for the people that he has placed in our lives, whether or not he is your, he is your biological father, your adopted father, your bump into father at church, whatever role he played, he has been significant in who you are. <coughs> I can remember uh, back in those days when I was a little bit younger than Mitch, and I was in the classroom, and uh, from time to time, my, my teachers would have to call somebody that lived with us at 2210 Noble, either my mother or my father, because somebody named Luther George was acting up. Uh, he, he would show up on those times, but those are really not the times that I remember. The times that I remember were the times where there was no announcement that he was coming. I guess because of those other times that he was called, he decided that there was some times he needed to show up when he was not called. And every now and then, I, I can remember in the classroom, I was thinking about doing something. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but I was just thinking about doing something that was probably not consistent with what the teacher wanted me to do. And uh, you take a second. Y'all see those, those little windows back there on that door? The ones, just, 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 just look at them for a second. Turn around and look at them. All right. Now, if you were seven and eight, and you were getting ready to do something that you knew <laughs> that there was going to be a belt waiting on you, but before you did it, you just happened to glance up, <laughs> and there was a man with a little stingy brim hat on. Cleaner than the, you know what? Gotten all dressed up and was peeping in the door to see what Luther was doing. I can't tell you how quickly I straightened up. <laughs> and that thing that I was thinking about doing it just went right out of my brain. <laughs> By just one glance up at the window, because I knew my father was outside waiting on me to do something silly. I say that to say, one of the important roles and functions of a father is to show up. Just show up. Be an example. Bring some discipline. Bring the heat when you need to. But also, 
show by showing up that you care. And this morning I have been just encouraged by the words from Minister Carl and the rest of our preachers, Brother Daniel. And they have had something to say, including Sister Kim and those who are in our choir ministry, mentioned the fact that we do have not just a father, but we have the father. And for those who, and, and I don't want to assume that everybody has had a pleasant and yeah, just a pleasant experience with the Father. But there is one who said that even if you didn't have one on earth, I'll be your heavenly Father. And then as I listened to the song about being a friend, a friend, a friend of God, I, I couldn't help but think about the number of men, males, that I went through to think about what could I tell the congregation this morning that would be an encouraging word on the day that we celebrate and we honor the men who have sown seeds into our lives and, and who would be that person. And when you talked about the friend of God, I couldn't help but think about Abraham. I thought about him primarily because the Bible says that through him, all the nations Greek and Gentile would be blessed. And, and an awesome father. And then I thought, well, you, you, how, how could you ignore Noah? I mean, how, how could you forget the one who when God was upset with everything walking, that all of us had upset the Lord. In fact, the Bible says that God was even upset that he had even made us. That's how we had gotten on God's last nerve. <laughs> I, I, I thought about, and, and the reason why you have to think about Noah is because here's one who for 120 years had one sermon. One sermon with just a few words for 120 years. His sermon topic, it's gonna rain. That's it. For 120 years, the same sermon, day after day after day for 120 years, it's gonna rain. At a time where people had not even seen rain, Located in a place where dew didn't even form on the ground. But yet his sermon for 120 years. It's going to rain. And because of his faithfulness. Not because of his children or his sons. What he did, he displayed his love for God, his obedience for God for 120 years. And as a result, not only was he saved when God had destroyed all flesh on earth, his sons and his daughter-in-laws were saved because of his faithfulness. Fathers play an important role in the salvation of their families. Fathers also have to show you how to do stuff. And this, mothers, y'all had y'all day last week, so today, I mean last month, so today we talking about fathers. And I promise you that even on just yesterday, she's not in here now, but Trevor's in here. Trevor changed my sermon yesterday. Because Trevor and his father Spray wash the sidewalk, the portico, the facade on the church. They literally work like Hebrew slaves all day yesterday. Let's give them a hand. 
Now, understand, Trevor didn't even know how to hook it up. But his father did. And I bet you right now, if you bring that spray washer right now, Trevor could hook it up and he could run it by himself. Why? Because his father took the time, took the time, took the time to show him. Now, let me tell you about the sacrifice of a father. See, because just day before yesterday, I was talking to his father and his father was somewhere so close to Canada, I thought he was speaking French. But then a day and a half later, the father is in Houston, Texas at 7900 Fuquay showing his son how to spray wash. Now, it's one thing to show a person or give a person a fillet. It's another thing to show him how to fish. And what he shared with his son yesterday, not only was a way that he could contribute to the church, but he also showed him a way he could make a living for the rest of his life. Because if you live in a city like Houston, Texas, with brick, mildew, stucco, and all of that, if you got a spray washing machine, uh, you can get rich. I don't mean wealthy. I said rich. I'm saying you could make so much money, uh, you could build your own wing to the church <laughs> if you so choose. And I thought about Charles when Daniel was standing up this morning. Standing up tall, reading the scripture. Who gave him the boldness to be able to stand? I have some people out here, and I've talked to y'all. I asked you about doing something, and they told me, oh, no, don't call on me to do something. I, Pastor, I can't stand before people and, say, and even give my name, let alone read the scripture. <laughs> and here's a young man that was born... <laughs> When this church was formed, and here it is later, he he is serving. Now, his 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 father has given him the holy boldness, even though his mother may have nurtured him and with love and kindness and all the things. That, and you all know how mothers take time to teach, beat, and do all the other stuff you got to do in order to get us right. But it's the father that makes a big difference when the father shows up. The father has to show up. The father has to show that he cares. The father has to demonstrate manly and godly attributes that the son and the daughters. You see, my, my, my granddaughter is cute. I promise you, can, you. You know she's cute. But she didn't just hear it from her grandfather. Her father was the first one. When she was born, from the moment she went, ah, she's been a beautiful child in her father's eye. Now, some jive turkey coming along talking about the old Callie, you so cute. She, 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 look, she would have already heard that. And where would she have heard it from? Her father first. Her grandfather standing in line said, I, I, I second that motion. Because why? She will not, for the first time in her life, hear who she is by somebody outside of her family. Even though she's the second child, the son, Shelton Ramsey Walker, for the first time in his life, he didn't hear that he had all the possibilities to be able to advance. He didn't hear it from a teacher. He didn't hear it from a stranger. He heard it in his home by his father and his mother. Men of covenant of faith. We have a responsibility to make sure that our young ladies know that they are beautiful, that they are loved, and they are protected. See, they, we have this thing in the United Methodist Church called Safe Sanctuary. 
But you have no idea how far I'm willing to go to make you not only feel safe, but to be safe in the presence of God. Because that's who we have looking over us is our God. We call him God. But one of the things that I heard this morning that reinforced the word is our father. Yahweh, Elohim, is our father. Emmanuel is God with us who is our friend because that is Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Jesus will stick closer to us than a brother. And how we like to sing, oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and all of our griefs he bears. What, 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 what a privilege it is to carry everything to the Father in prayer. What happened when the disciples saw the relationship that Jesus had with his Father? Yeah, they observed him turning water into wine. They observed him walking on water. They observed him being able to take two fish and five loaves and feed 5,000 men plus women and children. They saw him heal lepers. They saw him heal the blind. They saw him fix broken limbs. They saw him with his power make people who had never walked, who had never seen, see and walk. But what they asked him was, Jesus, teach us. How to connect with the Father the way that you connect with the Father. And Jesus said, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father. Bringing us all in the connection with who he is. But the beautiful thing about Jesus. And the beautiful thing about relationships between fathers and sons. Is that they are not always, Brother Carl, they're not always public. Some of the most powerful conversations that I had with my dad, nobody else was around. It was just me, and I would say, Father, but I, I'm just going to have to just break it on down. Me and my daddy. Just sit down, kicking it, chopping it up, and him giving me wisdom that I could use the rest of my life. I, I would go to sporting events. Mom would make sure we were there. I loved the fact that mom was there. But when daddy showed up, that, that was an extra few seconds in that 100 yard freestyle. And it, that, it, it, I was a little bit fast in that backstroke. That butterfly got a, got a little bit more aggressive. That breaststroke got to be, oh my God. I'm telling you, when dad shows up, there's something that swells up in a man, in a child, in a boy, that to, to, to impress his father, he will blow his lungs out trying to beat whoever's in front of him because dad showed up I, I remember a time Rudine and, and I had left Max home alone why we did that I have no idea <laughs> but when we got home Elaine, Max was standing in some water. He had a screwdriver in his hand. He said he was getting ready to put a dimmer, a dimmer switch in his room. And just when he was about to touch, he said, Dad, I, I cut the electricity off with the switch. Uh, he hadn't gone out to the breaker box to make sure that no electricity was in the house, Charles. He said, just because I flipped the light off, the light was off. And he's standing in some water. He's about to stick the screwdriver and be electrocuted. We walked around the corner and we start speaking in tongues. <laughs> 
what the are you about to to yourself and this house? And he said, but dad, I, 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 I cut the, I cut the, leg. boy, you hadn't cut nothing off. What you were about to do is turn into a crispy critter. <laughs> Thank God that we, God navigated circumstances in such a way that we got there, Felicia, right on time. Thank you, Lord. It would have been a different story. No grandchildren. No son. <laughs> but thanks be to God. For his grace. And his living mercy. Now y'all. When we talk about. What a friend we have in Jesus. And how he through his providential knowledge and power, connected us all to God by faith in him. We have the chance this morning of giving our Heavenly Father some praise for all of the things that he has done that we've never acknowledged. Just think for a second, and you don't have to have any overt displays of how you feel about it. But just think about the fact that if you are here this morning, that some very significant things, things have happened that you've never acknowledged. As an example, how many times do you wake up and look at the news and find out that somebody just died behind a straight bullet? Have you ever, when you wake up in the morning, have you ever thanked God? Like my, <laughs> those deacons in the country used to say that my, my bed last night was not my cooling board. How many times have you thanked God for the bullets that didn't have your name on it? How, how many times have you thanked God for those airplanes that fly over a covenant of faith and they stay in the air. How, how many times a day, somewhere around 300 flights a day fly right over a covenant of faith. And we've been here since 2002. The church has been here well, since 19, what, 62? Is that a good number, somebody? Close to that. And the planes have stayed in the air the grace of God how many times have we had lightning strikes in this area that mounted into the hundreds of strikes within two or three hours and to date they all have not touched this building how many times have you thanked God for the same thing over your home. Because the same planes that fly over your church. Also fly over your home. And God. In his grace and mercy. Has protected us. And as we celebrate Father's Day. And of all the fathers. In scripture. The father that I would like to. Thank God. God for today is for himself. Thanking him for having all of us as his bad children and he loves us anyway. He's not counting how big our Bible is. He's not counting how many times you came to church in a row. <laughs> He's not checking your tithes. Even, all those things are important. But what he's really checking is to see how much you love him and how much you love each other. Notice this. <laughs> and I'm going to let you go. I think. For 400 years, 
from Malachi to Matthew, God, our Father, has been and was silent. Never said a word. Not through his prophets. The only word they had was a word he'd already given in the Pentateuch. First five books of our Bible. They had that to read and rely on. But as far as a relationship with the Father, if it, had, if it were not through the scriptures, they did not get it because God was not speaking out loud, nor was he speaking through his prophets for 400 years. When the message was to give Mary the virgin that she was going to have a son and his name would be called Emmanuel, God didn't even come himself. He sent an angel. When Joseph was thinking about messing the whole thing up, God did not show up. He sent an angel in a dream. Joseph, this is what I need you to do. For 33 years on this earth, Jesus Christ was about to enter his public ministry at the age of 30. We do not hear out loud. I'm sure there were many private conversations with his father. But God himself has not spoken so that we could know that he was there. But at the baptism of his son, when his earthly ministry was about to commence, you know on those important days, state meet, championships, the big test, the big biscuit, the biggest piece of chicken, dad will show up. But when it was time for Jesus to be initiated into his public ministry after over four hundred years of silence the father shows up and the fathers I tell you it's important that you show up because right after chapter 3 in the synoptic gospel of Matthew at the baptism there is a chapter 4 and in chapter 4 is when the temptation of our Christ, initiated by the Holy Spirit, is about to take place. And God the Father knew that it was important for the Son to know that he was there and that he was on his side and that he knew, based on the challenges that Jesus was about to face, that he knew that he needed to show up. And the Bible says that when John the baptizer brought him up out of the water, assimilating death, burial, and resurrection, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove. That the Son of God was in the water being initiated for his public ministry. But the voice of God the Father ripped the heavens open. And before he had accomplished a single miracle, before he had turned water into wine, before he had done anything, before he had healed the blind, cured the sick, before he had done anything, the father said, this is my son. And with him, before he has done anything, I am well pleased. Why? Because he knows everything. And he knew that his son was going to be faithful, 
faithful unto death, even death on a cross. And he just had to let the world and every seen and unseen demon know that this is my son. And with him, with him, I am well pleased. Fathers, almost fathers, going to be fathers, father light, father like, and all of those who share their godly wisdom with young men and women. Thank you for what you do. But thank you for being an instrument of God the Father so that his love can touch the lives as our, of our young men and women as they mature because God has entrusted to covenant of faith a number of young people who will grow up and make a difference in this world because of your prayers, your nurturing, and more importantly, your example. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.